with Art Classes for Kids, and today we're gonna be working with watercolors. I have Alaha here, one of my best students. Alaha, you love watercolors, or what do you be up for? Okay, so I'm gonna teach you how to make a watercolor still life of this vase of daffodils. You ready? Yep. Okay, first let me tell you what we're gonna need. What we're gonna need today are watercolor paper, and we are going to tape the edges, just like Alaha's looks. We're gonna need watercolor paints, a jar of water, a paper towel, and a variety of sizes of paintbrushes. You've got yours, oh, I've got three, you got four. Should I get one more? Maybe. Maybe, okay. You've got a detail one. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. Okay, to get started, we're gonna take our tape, our paper, and add the masking tape. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up the edge of the tape with the edge of the paper, rub it down, and then what I like to do is pick it up and tear away from the paper to cut the tape. Tape, tape, tape. Do it on all four sides. And then you're ready to start painting. Okay. So we're not going to draw it. We're just gonna look at our still life and we're gonna go for it. Okay, are you up for it? it? We're gonna wing it, okay? So I'm gonna take my medium brush and get it wet and the first thing I'm gonna do is make the vase. Before I even start drawing it with paint, I wanna decide how big am I going to make my composition on this paper. Am I gonna zoom into one flower or am I gonna draw the whole vase with flowers? So what I wanna do is draw the whole vase and all the flowers and fit them all in. Some of them might even be going off the edges on this one. So my vase is less than half of the total height of the object. So I wanna start my vase below the, half, the bottom half of my painting. I'm gonna take my paintbrush, I'm gonna get a little gray. How I'm gonna get gray is I'm going to wet the brush, go off to the little side part where I can mix and get it wet, it'll turn light, transparent gray. And I'm gonna carefully look and see that I've got two sides of my vase, vase or vase, whichever one you say. I'm kind of West Coast and I say vase. So I'm drawing with uh, paint, but I'm using gray paint. And then I'm going to the top and I see a wavy edge. And I'm gonna get a little more transparent. And I'm going to make that back edge like so, and now I have the shape of my vase. Once I get that shape, I'm going to add this detail to the bottom where you can see that it's white glass, but at the very bottom edge, it's clear glass. And I'm also gonna add the detail of having an edge to the top of the vase where you can tell how thick the glass is. Just like that. That's a good starting spot. Okay, you ready? Let's move on. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do are the yellow flowers. Using the medium sized brush, grab your medium brush, get the, the brightest yellow you can find. Yellow. Get really juicy. When I say juicy, I mean like just rub a lot of water into it. Instead of letting the water just lay on top of the little tablet, and these are like tablet kind of dry watercolors compared to the kind in a tube or the sticky kind. So these you gotta rub them a lot to get the pigment out, but you can do it. Okay, so now I'm gonna start looking around at all of my daffodils. So the ones that are closest to the vase, how far are they away from the edge of the vase? This one's about here. I draw a circle and then I put that kind of daisy looking starburst of, well, it's kind of like a daisy. And then I fill it in with water. Because I really don't even need that much paint. So I get one there and I don't have the detail yet of the center where the pollen comes out and it makes that shape, it looks like a little horn. I'm gonna draw one and then I'm going to the next place. Looks good. And yeah, make sure you have lots of paint on your brush. And then I'm going to see, oh, I've got one right next to it touching it. So I'm gonna add that in. In the center. I only draw what I see. So then I see one near that in front of it. So now I'm gonna draw that one. 
So they basically you're drawing a bunch of yellow stars in a way that have six points. Just keep adding flowers as you see them in your still life. So then I get about this minute. Yeah, so keep going. You're looking great. Thank you. Yeah, keep overlapping. Make sure you're using enough water that the water kind of drips out. So watch this. See how it like flows better when you have a lot more water on it? Just keep. You can get the color bolder by rubbing more, but you just need to make sure you have enough water in it. Okay, and then just make sure you add a little water in between, you know, the, those little spots so it's filled with wet watercolor. Okay, looks good. Now, as we're letting it dry, we're gonna pick a green. Green! See where the stems originate from the top of the flower down into the vase. So I see this one goes here and it's going down into the vase. Or the vase. Or the vase. Some people say vase, some people say vase. Okay. So now you're just drawing wherever you see it, but whenever you bump into a petal, don't cross in front of it, just keep stopping in between a yellow area. Looking good. Now if you ever get it where you don't want it on yellow, you can do what I do. I bend my paper towel into a point like this, and then I make like I'm at a dental office and I'm slurping away the saliva and I just go <laughs> And all of a sudden, I just remove it, see? And so if you have green there and you don't want it there, you just can do a little of that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look, I'm gonna add some yellow, yellow to my green stems, but only on one side so it looks a little lighter. So if you can add a little yellow to one side of each stem, it'll make it brighter and it'll give it more of a 3D look. Wow, that looks great. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take a look at your water. It has a little bit of a color to it. It might not be enough, but I'm gonna give it a try. See how I'm taking a look at the vase and I can see through the white milky color and I can see a shadow of where the stems continue inside the vase? Well, I can either take that green that was there and pull it kind of in front, like so, and I've got all these stems. I'm just adding water to the bottom of that. That looks good. Now take your really fine brush and see where that edge of my vase was. I, I don't want that to have green on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of wash it out with this skinny brush. If I can't get it washed out enough with a skinny brush, then I do the point again. And I get it into a point, a fresh new point. And then I take that point and I kind of blot or rub through there and it makes this area white again. And remember, there's no perfection, because I love the water clothes when they're looser. Okay, you ready to learn the next part? Okay, we're gonna save the details and the daffodils and the shading uh, for a little bit later. But right now, we're gonna establish where the edge of the table is, the still life's on. And we're and, gonna take our big brush. And take our big brush and figure out what color we want it. So, well actually, take the small brush, because I want you to do the line. So I'm gonna have my table be right here, because that's the way it looks to me. Okay, then I've established that line. I get my bigger brush and I get that color of my table to be bright and juicy and now I'm gonna slowly paint around the vase without messing it up. But we gotta work fast. I'll tell you why, because when you let watercolors dry and you try to match the color, sometimes it doesn't match so good. But if it's wet, you can blend it into where you last painted. Now remember when I started, I pointed out that this is like a milky white glass, but down here it's clear. So I can see some white and some gray lines, but I also see a little peak of the tablecloth behind it. So to make this look really real, I'm gonna take this pink, pink. and I'm gonna add that little bitty bit of the tablecloth showing through. And next what I'm going to do is reestablish this gray line, the edge of the back of the inside of the vase. So I'm getting some gray again. And I'm just gonna make this line a little darker and continue it behind.
Okay, so now what we're going to do is the background. So pick a color that's contrasting. You want a color that is going to make the yellow pop. So you probably want to go with, you know, like a blue or a purple or even an, a bright orange. I don't know. Go ahead and pick. I'm going to pick, I'm going to choose dark blue. Blue! So I get my color nice and juicy and I'm going to start over here where I don't have a lot going on. And then I'm getting closer to my leaves and my petals. So when I get that close, I gotta be a little more careful that I don't cross on top of the yellow. So I'm gonna get this all going, then I'm gonna choose a smaller brush to get in between the petals. Once I get that, I'm gonna get the blue, and which is my background color, and I'm gonna go all the way up to my yellow flower as close as I can without it kind of bleeding and making the two colors just um, like, a, like yeah. a tie dye shirt. <laughs> and for them to turn a new color, yes. So I go back and I detail this. If you get it too dark, all you have to do is add water and then fade it out. Okay, next we're gonna be doing the details of the daffodils. Take your fine brush, and then take yellow, yellow. and then mix a little orange, orange. into it. Or an orangey brown, if you'd like. And you're gonna get a new color. It's gonna be like a yellow orange. So now what I want you to do is look at the daffodils and see it's like four flat, uh, six flat uh, petals plus the centerpiece is just kind of like a horn or a, a bell with ruffles on the edges or something. So watch what I do. Um, I figure out where I see the ruffles and I make a wiggly circle. Then I make a wiggly circle inside of it and have a little dot. Okay, once you do that on a few, you're going to add some lines to the petals. Save the details for last so they can step away from it, then look at it once more, adding any s details and contrast that you might not have seen when you stared at it for a long time. Basically, you want to get on the, the little horn. If you can see it forward, it kind of like curves out like the outlines. Repeat this across all your flowers. Now whenever working on a still life, one of the tricks is to just take a really deep look at what you're actually painting. Then break it down into really simple shapes and lines and just transposing that onto the surface that you're making your work of art. Three, ta-da! And that's how you make a watercolor still life painting out of something you just see in your own home. Post a photo of how yours turned out on Instagram and tag it with art classes for kids. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below any project request you have for us. Keep making cool art.